AGI, humanity's last invention. The most advanced tech we know is possible, completely different from any invention we have right now, today. It's not here yet, but if it was, it would lead to some grand consequences. So what is AGI? Well, a simple thing to answer, AGI is an acronym for Artificial General Intelligence. And I do believe that in order to unpack this efficiently, we should start from the end with intelligence. Intelligence could be best described as the ability to pursue a goal. So when you have a goal, intelligence tells you how efficient are you at achieving this goal. That's at least the most useful definition of intelligence you can find for this purpose. General. General, in this case, means intelligence not bound to a specific type of goal. For example, ChatGPT is not general intelligence, because ChatGPT is only good at figuring out what word comes next. DALI is not general intelligence, because DALI is only good at figuring out what image should it create based on some prompt. Humans are general intelligence, because we are good at a variety of things. Evolution never taught us how to drive a car, yet we can. Like, we can even build a car in order to drive it. And that is certainly not something that evolution wanted us to know. Artificial. Artificial in this sense means that we humans can create it ourselves. This is especially important and convenient because it means that we can kind of control how it's engineered. It is useful for a variety of things, from keeping us safe to make sure that no general intelligence is leaked until we are sure that it's safe, to making sure that it's useful, to making sure that it's human compatible, that it, it, we can actually use it. So that's what an AGI is. It is a normal AI, except it's general, which means it can do a variety of goals. Kind of like a human, but faster. But now it'll be time to answer the next question. Why is it the last invention? So why are AGI's the last human invention? Well, there are basically three different scenarios. Scenario number one, humanity will die before we create AGI's. I don't really think this is probable because there is no reason for us to die out. Human extinction is very, very unlikely, but that's the topic for another video, so let's just say it's unlikely. Scenario two, we create a misaligned AGI. One thing about intelligence which is very important to remember is that it is powerful. Very, very much powerful. And AGIs would be very, very intelligent, which means if we create a misaligned AGI, we'll get to what misaligned means later on, it means that it will basically destroy whatever it has to in order to achieve its own goal, which probably means human extinction. In which case, AGI would be humanity's last invention. Scenario 3. We create a good AGI. This basically means that we create an AGI which is not misaligned. And in that case, it would be humanity's last invention. But what do I mean by that? Well, you see, we have invented a lot of things as humans, but all of them have the same problem. You see, it is a myth that humans survived only due to their intelligence. Humans are actually pretty cool, with some really good running, really good throwing, our intelligence came in handy only later on, when we started inventing things that could go faster than humans, throw harder than humans, or think better. And that means that even though we are slower than a car, or weaker than a murderous robot, we still are kind of better than them, because we can create faster cars and more powerful robots. The thing about AGI, though, is that it can invent things better than we do. Which means there would be no need for us to invent anything new. AGI would do the inventing for us. So if we create AGI, there is no need for us to invent anything else. A perfect battery. AGI could create that. It could create the fastest car, the strongest robot. That's why AGI would be humanity's last invention, no matter the outcome. 
which would actually lead me to the next question. If AGI is so advanced, why do we even know it's possible? But why is it the most advanced piece of technology we know is possible? Well, because we actually kind of already know three different ways to make it. And here they are, ranking from the simplest but toughest to the most complex but the easiest. Number one, simulating a human brain. Simulating a human brain is not an easy task. It's very difficult. But at the same time, we know it can be done. And we could do it today. It would require a lot of work and in the end might not be worth it, but it would be possible. So that's the simplest but toughest way to do it. Number two, using our current machine learning technology. Using our current machine learning technology could be a reasonable solution. It's certainly way more complex. We can just simulate something that already exists. We have to be smart about it, but it would be way easier. We could use algorithms to do most of the work for us, but it would still be rather hard. Third method is just to use some future tech. And what's really interesting about that is that when it goes to some really advanced problems, the third method is usually the only available one. Second method is only available for some advanced problems, but AGI is the only technology this advanced which we could theoretically make just by scanning a human brain. The third approach actually is a bit too standard. It's very standard for every piece of technology actually and that is use some future technology which means wait until more research is done in the field and then do the actual thing so that we can finally have some thinking machines except hold on a second i mean we already have intelligent artificial things am i right i mean for goodness sake you are watching this on youtube Think about all of the technology that is used just to keep YouTube operational. All of this intelligence that is required to do it, all the algorithms, everything. Well, AGI is actually different. It's a lot different. In order to understand why, we'll have to understand the difference between calculation and computation. So, calculation versus computation. What is the difference? Well, they both involve solving mathematical equations just in two different ways. Computation is what every computer does, and it basically looks like this. You have an equation, and you just solve it. Blindly. If you have a mathematical constant, you have to shorten it, especially if it's an infinite constant, then obviously. And in the end, you end up with a solution. An imperfect, and most of the time rounded, solution, but it's good enough for most of everyday purposes. Usually we don't actually need exact equations and very good approximations, which is fine. And computation has a really nice advantage of being really simple, which means you don't have to over-engineer a processor in order to make computation possible. Calculation is different. It is way more complex, well tougher, and processors can't really do it. Usually only humans calculate things, but it has a really nice advantage of giving you the exact and precise solutions. Calculation is much better if you need to be precise, but computation is much better if you have to do a lot of equations really quickly. And that's pretty much why right now we have a lot of programs that appear to be thinking, but we don't have AGIs. Calculation requires creativity a lot of creativity, whilst computation is just a simple set of rules that can be followed by a machine. And because of that we can see the biggest issue, which is creativity. We just don't know how to create creative things. Our best guess so far is randomly. We don't really have a good system for creating creativity. Which brings us to the next point. Why isn't AGI here yet? So why isn't AGI here yet? Well, uh, there are four main reasons. Number one, we don't really know what to teach it. When you have AIs, you have to teach them something. The thing is, you have to define your goal very well. Very, very well. The more complex the goal, the more examples you need. 
that's the basis for all of AIs. It's basically easier to check if the AI performed the goal correctly than to explain the goal to AI. When it comes to AGI though, well, general intelligence, that's about as complex as it can get, which means we would have to define it really well. And you can try it for yourself if you want, but it's really hard to check if some action is intelligent for human goals. Is the usual queen losing situation in chess. Is losing a queen in chess a bad thing? Well, yes, it is, except if it leads to forced mate, then it's not. So is the action of an AI dumb? Or maybe we are too dumb to understand it? That's the pickle. Second, how are we supposed to teach it? How we teach the AI seems the same as the first thing, but it's not. It is actually a bit different, because how we teach AIs is very important, obviously. The biggest problem being, let's imagine we want to create an AI that would invent something for us. We have to first teach it how to invent stuff. How can you do it? Well, you can give it a lot of scientific papers about inventing stuff and then ask it to generate a paper. One problem though, if you measure the error of the AI, which means how bad it is performing based on how many words it missed in the paper, then it wouldn't be an AI for generating stuff, it would be an AI for generating papers. Seems like the same thing, but it's not. It's really not, because it would basically generate what it thinks scientific papers look like. They wouldn't have to make sense, they wouldn't have to walk, they would just have to look like scientific papers. Now, in order to understand why this would be a problem, let's imagine teaching this sort of AI. Now, if this AI generates a paper which says which causes this wheel to spin, and we compare it to the paper that it's learning on, which says which causes the wheel to rotate, then we should be able to see the issue. For our purposes, there is no difference in between spin and rotate. They both mean the same thing. But from the point of our script, they are not the same, which means the AI got something wrong. Which would give it an additional point, because yes, that's correct, causes the wheel to all are correct and all give additional point, but rotate would be bad, which means point taken. Now, this does not seem like an issue. I mean, this just seems like our AI is learning to just replace rotate with spin, right? But it is, because you see, AIs have some sort of maximum amount of intelligence they can have, which means that if it learns a useless skill like this one, then it has to replace some sort of useful skill in order for it to be remembered. And considering that this is just one of many, many, many examples where this could happen, it leads to some serious issues. Three, AI safety. For AI safety, we have basically two subcategories, misalignment and undefined behavior. So let's start with misalignment. Now, when it comes to misalignment, this is actually a bit too complex to explain for a simple sub point on a sub list. So instead, I'll just point you to Robert Miles and give you the basic idea of what misalignment is. Let's imagine an AI which is learning how to play chess. Now we showed it a lot of games, and based on those games, AI could be really good at playing chess, there's a possibility. But at the same time, it could have just learned to go forward. I mean, in most of the chess games, people usually tend to go forward, which means that this actually might be a logical solution for the AI. But that's pretty obvious and easy to detect. On the other hand, misalignment could be much more subtle. It could seem really similar to the original goal, but still wrong. For example, AI could learn instead to win, to just capture them in pieces. In this case, there was a simple mate, but then for the AI, this would be the best move. I mean, it learned to capture pieces, so it seems pretty logical. And that's the first thing. But then, something that is really often overlooked, mainly because of the fact that it can be fixed with computational power most of the time, is undefined behavior. So let's say we create an AI that's supposed to tell us how much of solution A are we supposed to add to solution B, based on how much solution B we have in order to get solution C. Just some kind of example. 
Now let's say we check it out a couple of points and it looks like this. I mean, in my opinion that seems pretty reasonable, right? That seems pretty likely, it looks like it follows a decent curve. And yeah, it might be very likely, but at the same time it might be very much undefined. And the entire function could look like this. Now that is a serious issue because it means that sometimes we can get some random spikes and we won't really be able to predict when unless we analyze the entire AI. But at the same time it can be fixed when AI is learning to actually be good. So most of the time it's not as scary. There's something to be wrong though. And so there we go. Now we know what is AGI. Why is it humanity's last invention? Why is it the most advanced technology we know is possible? Why is it different from all the others? And why it's not here yet? Now it's time to talk about the results. And the results would be... Grant. Now many people here get scared because there are only two choices for us. Either we'll all die or life will be heaven. Possibly not even heaven on earth. We might go beyond that. But there are reasons to be optimistic. You see, if there was an AGI out there that would be misaligned, it would be practically impossible to stop. There would be nothing we could do. AGIs would be just better than us at being smart. But fortunately, there aren't any AGIs, which means we have the head start. We can design a safe one. And so if we do design a safe one, well, we would finally have our perfect world. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye.